Welcome to the fifth annual Adjust Your TV Hurricane Special. In this episode, which company should you work for starting now? This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Adjuster TV Plus. So there are a lot of IA firms out there. Which one should you work for? And the answer is, if you're brand new, work for whoever calls you. That's the short answer to the whole thing. If you're an experienced adjuster, you're not gonna be asking this question because you're gonna know who you like to work for because you have built relationships with this company and you've tried working for this company over here and it didn't really, really click very well or you didn't like the way they did things, it was total chaos or just there, there was personality conflicts or whatever, but then you go work for this company over here and you, it's like hand in glove, right? And you're gonna find that this is the case. And if you're watching this, I, I'm not gonna say, well, it's this company because that's nobody likes working for them or it's this company, everybody likes working for them because it could, you could be hand in glove with these guys over here and can't stand these guys over here, right? It's entirely up to you. To start, you're not gonna know any of this and you're not gonna know, nobody can tell you and nobody's gonna know if you're gonna really click with Pilot or, and, or really, really click with Crawford or vice versa, right? Or click with all of them for all you know or, or none of them, hopefully it's not none of them. But so to start, you know, we talk about um, standby, you, you onboard these companies and, and you wanna, you want to be onboarding uh, as soon as you decide that you're all in on this this business. You're going to pick up a license, and then you need to start onboarding with the biggest companies because those are the ones that are going to have the, the most opportunities for you as a new person. After a year or two, maybe three years, then you can kind of like explore the rest of the industry and say, okay, well, you know, this company only works in the southeast, and that's where I live, and I met them at the NACA convention. Um, I want to try to go work for those guys only, right? And I, you know, they seem to be really, seem to be really cool, and I'm going to try to just I don't need to do like the State Farm, like the the big like huge sort of corporate things. We're going to go for like the maybe commercial claims with this smaller regional company, right? And you can do that after you've got experience, but you're not gonna get the experience and the opportunities unless you go with like those big companies. So you need to onboard with those companies as fast as possible. Once you've onboarded with them, they're all gonna put you on standby, say yes to all of them, and then you go with the first one, right? The first one, you work claims for them and it may be personality conflicts, maybe total chaos, uh, right? But there's no way to know. You just have to do it, grin and bear it, Try to get the work done as best you can, as fast as you can. Try to, to, to maximize the experience with doing this and get as much out of it as you possibly can in spite of like it seeming like it's a total train wreck. You can still close the claims and you can still get paid, right? So you have to like kind of just put your head down, do the work and get through it, right? And then you might say the next time that there's another, you know, standby situation, maybe you just you take, you make yourself unavailable to those guys and you're only gonna be available to these these four over here plus the two more that you've added, right? So then somebody, these guys will put you on standby and then you go with the first one that calls you here. Or maybe you absolutely love them and you never work for anybody else again. I mean, I did that for 15 years with, with the company that I started with. They just kept me really busy, loved working for them. They're a great company and didn't, didn't need to try to go look for other firms until later on when I was like, you know, maybe I should, maybe, expand a little bit, right? And it took years and years and years because I got really comfortable where I was and I was doing really well. So long story short, it doesn't really matter which company uh, that you work for. Um, you're gonna find out who you like to work with and who you don't like to work with. And it may be that it's not even like the IA firm people, it's the carrier people that you love or you don't love, right? And then you, if it's, you know, if, you're, if you really have a great relationship with the IA firm, but the carrier that you've been working for is you don't care for the way they do business or they, for whatever reason, right? It's just, you're not clicking. Then you can go to your IA firm and say, hey, listen, what other opportunities do you guys have? Because most, the vast majority of IA firms don't just run claims for one company, especially the big the big IA firms. They run it for multiple carriers, right? So you can be like, um, I, I really have a lot of, I struggle when I'm working with these guys. And I feel like I could do better uh, with a company with somebody else, right? Are there, do you have any other options? And just talk to have a conversation with them, right? So um, this is all about the relationship building. Absolutely go to the National Association of Catastrophe Adjusters annual convention. Uh, the next one's in, they're always in January. The next one's in Reno. And uh, you gotta go. 
is all these companies, not the carriers, but the, all the I firms, all of them, all, especially all the big ones, are, are always there. And you can sit down with them and talk to them. You can kind of get a feel for their personality, right? Do you click with these guys or you don't click with those guys? And then maybe you just forget about those guys and you really, really pile in and like, they have all their I firm trainings and they have all their uh, carrier certifications and things and you just go all in on these guys, right? So it's a great opportunity. Um, and I strongly recommend that you do it. If it's summertime right now, that means they still have early bird pricing, but that doesn't last for very long. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.